So I'm State Representative Dave Maloney, and here we're at the Pennsylvania Farm Show talking with uh, Secretary Redding. Um, this is usually an annual catch-up to details. It's a great event. Happy New Year to you. Welcome. You, and, and you too. And, Thank uh, you. And it uh, looks like we should have a good year, and we all hope that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And so how about we get an update a little bit on, I know there's two different specific subjects that I would like to ask you about um, in the interest of time. Yeah. One would be uh, certainly the spotted lanternfly and where we uh, think that has gone. Yeah. Well, uh, at this point, as we turn to, you know, the January 2020, uh, we are still uh, in 14 counties and quarantined to 14 counties. Uh, you, you've had the, the firsthand experience from the day, early days of this, right? Yes. So you've seen it move and uh, the, the difficulty of, of trying to find um, controls for this pest and I'll just say as we, we go to the new year we're, we're, we're going to regroup here early but uh, making sure that we're you know, we've got our team of Penn State and USDA and PDA we've got a full force in the field the research projects are still underway we have not found that uh, broad-based control for the spotted lanternfly yet and so what I'd like to to bring up which I don't know that anybody else yet has talked about this in this um, in this way. So it seems to me from having been there from day one that we have this like three year cycle where they get very intense and then it fades away. And like for me in a five year period of time, I hardly see any. And so I have all these reports from all over the different places in, in the state where they're going through the same type of cycle and then people will come to me even here at the farm show and told me they we were inundated last year but not this year right. and so it seems like they cycle and even with the elanthius tree mm -hmm. it seems like they feed on it intensely and it's almost as if that because they get so much from it they seem to move yeah you know i mean you point to one of the the you know complexities and perplexities of this is that you can have intensity and then none, and then back to intensity, right? And, and we've seen in the 14 counties, all the variations, people who were just absolutely sick, that they were infested with these things one year, and then the next year they're tolerable, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't know what the, what the chemistry of that, the biology behavior of it uh, looks like. Maybe it follows the pattern of the stink bug, where yeah. it's intense, and then, then, then you have this sort of, it relinquishes. But at this point, we don't have any way to control it uh, and it's an invasive that feeds on an invasive, as you, you right. allude to. But at the same time, um, and we're hopeful we can keep it within the uh, 14 counties and then suppress the population. Because we've got it, the problem we have, it's got also now down into Philadelphia. Yeah, right? Sure. So if it gets... And we yeah, know that port is a problem. We know the port's a problem. And, and making sure, because the other countries have already put us on notice. Right. Other states have put us on notice. We're going to work hard at it. I mean, I appreciate the support. I mean, you've been a great advocate for the funding and support and challenging us to really think creatively about how to control it. I appreciate that. Um, we're, just, we're just not there in terms of having that, that uh, way to get out there and control it. Right. And, and I see that as something that we more or less uh, get thrown into a, an arena sometimes that we have no idea we're going to be. Yeah. And to me, that's um, an interesting part of my job where not necessarily the job description, but it brings other things because it's what you live and where you live right. and how that can impact you. So moving on to my other subject, um, you know that I've been very um, instrumental also in monies, and that would be for CWD. Right. And so um, the CWD that really, uh, the monies, the million dollars in this past budget that I was instrumental in really had a purpose, which is to really create test kits so that our hunters would be able to test. We would be able to know in a short period of time if a deer does have a CWD and be able to address it aggressively that way. Yep. What can you speak to in terms of what I just shared? Right, so I will say a couple of things. One, uh, thank you. Uh, first year we've actually had a, an appropriation. Right. Uh, it wasn't for, easy. It wasn't easy, and I appreciate that, right? Because we, we've talked about this before. Everything else that we were doing, we had to go to animal health. We had to pull it away. Something else was sacrificed 
to get money for CWD except this year. So a million dollars, first time, state history, part of the farm bill, and I appreciate that. Right, so now uh, we put it out. The second thing is we, we ask, we put out the call for proposals. The, the, the request, RFP. RFP is out, right, and they're back. Right. Um, and we hope that this month we can get those reviewed so we can make some decisions and commit the million dollars. But it's all in furtherance of trying to find this answer, right, to see. Which I think is important yeah. because from your perspective, um, although it may be different in my perspective, we have a unified um, front, if you will, on trying to address something that first reared its ugly head in 1967. Yeah. And so, because it was in Colorado, and we're evidently, a, as we very obviously are a few states away, this is something that has not been figured out. It's not figured out. And that's why, to me, it's almost a parallel to the spot in Lanternfly with respect to, um, yes, it has a different impact, but nonetheless, um, people don't agree. Yeah. They don't agree on how we should possibly address this or what we can use to address it. So I, I wanted to bring that up. Those are the two things that are very important to me. No, and I know they're personally important to you. you, you you've committed a lot of uh, your, your public life to trying to figure those things out, and I appreciate that. And there are times when you know, we, we've been sort of at odds. It is not over, uh, you know, that they aren't problems. It's sort of how do we get, how do we right. find those solutions? So thanks for, you know, resources and putting some resource behind both the Spotted Lantern Fly and the CWD. Uh, I'm hopeful that we'll, we'll get the right researchers involved in, in the CWD to find that, that uh, test kit, as you, you say, to find an answer that we really need. It is a problem both inside and outside the fence, right? Right. Uh, and I think that's one of those things that you and I can agree that Everybody wants to push it out to the wild or push it into right. the. That's, yeah, that's silly. I mean, right. right at the end of the day, it's here. How do you want to manage it? A solution so, should work both sides of the fence. It's got to be both sides of the fence. I'd also say we need the USDA. There has to be some uh, you know, uh, national leadership on the CWD. What runs into Maryland? What goes into New York? What's hit? Right. Right. It's a. It's a. It's a United States problem. It's not right. just Pennsylvania's. That's why I brought that up about it being from '67 back in Colorado, yeah. and because we have not figured this out, or because we have not either been able to find a direction, right. we're dealing with this, and we're talking about not only heritage and tradition, we're talking about billion-dollar industries that are relying on us to find an answer to this. Absolutely. So. Um, I, uh, I will tell you again, uh, I didn't expect to go to Washington, D.C. for the spotted lanternfly like I did, but I will be going to Washington, D.C., uh, God willing, for the CWD. Yeah. And so I have people nationally that have reached out to me. I have people who have invited me down there, and, and I'm looking for anything that can be shared to fix a problem. Well, keep advocating. I mean, I think you, you get it in terms of it's it's both a uh, it, it's a heritage issue, but it's also an economic issue. Oh my word! Right, and it's, and it's a health issue for our our deer, domestic and wild, um, and what impact that has on people's perceptions sure. of both the industry, right. but also what Pennsylvania does in terms of its its heritage. So, yeah. thank our, you. Our, our management, not only wild wildlife management, but you know the habitat management. I believe has created, I know for me personally, a tremendous concern on what do we do with our habitat to address this, or to at least to help to address it. Yeah. So it's all part of that bigger picture. It's part of it, and I think we, we've been trying in the Department of Ag, you know, we, we've taken it seriously, trying to figure out what to do with it, uh, looking at the science components, how do you manage the problem in the meantime, right, because there's two straight, you got to manage it, and you got to figure out the science piece of it. Uh, of how do we manage it, and, and that's proven to be incredibly challenging yeah. because of the movement of deer, because of the the the, 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 um, the propagators and their sort of historical patterns. Right. I mean, and quite frankly, I mean, some of the USDA leadership, they've been helpful, but I think we don't have this national strategy, right? We're trying to deal with it as a state, and that's proven to be, we'll do it, but we need, we need everybody in that conversation. So, but thanks for, keep, keep advocating. And that's what we have to do. Yeah, yeah, so, appreciate it. thanks again, and uh, happy, happy, happy New Year to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate yep. it.